Hey guys, it's FeeRezzy91, and I'm bringing you just some. I know I'm a little late on this. I'm bringing you my thoughts on Nintendo Z3. The reason I'm late is because Nintendo didn't exactly just do a conference. They, they did, like, a conference, and then they had other stuff afterwards. Like, they, had, they called it Nintendo's Treehouse, where they even revealed more stuff. Up to the last day, they were still revealing at least new gameplay footage of stuff, even if they had announced it already. I mean, like, it was like... Because I remember the end of the last day... I was um like um, one guy said now there's a game that we've been hinting at but it's gonna we're gonna see it tomorrow and I'm like wow another new IP and they said yeah it was gonna be a new IP so I was like wow so Nintendo I wanted to wait until I I actually made a video and then I was like you know what let me wait and then I realized that it was good that I did because Nintendo really did bring out more stuff honestly Nintendo was basically the only one to watch that was that was more interesting to me personally to watch than the other ones after the fir after the conferences that is. All right, so what did I think? Nintendo's conference was pretty, the digital event was pretty, it started off pretty great. You have Iwata and Fuzume fighting um, like um, superhero characters and then they show that you, they reveal that you can have your own Miis in the Wii U version of Smash Brothers. Not sure if, in th uh, probably in the 3DS version as well, but I'm not sure. But then they um, move on to um, just other games. One thing I'm not so sure about though is the um, Amiibos. I mean, let's just face it, People are, this whole Skylanders thing, it really took off. It's kind of like when the Wii took off and then everybody wanted to do motion, plot, motion controlling. It's something that, yes, it's, I mean, it may be making money. I'm sure it is making money if they wouldn't do it, but you don't need that in a Super Smash game. I don't think you need, I mean, it may work. Who knows? It may work, but I don't think you need these toys that are going to zap into your controller. Can't you just download the characters? You don't need to go out and buy a toy, put it on your controller for two seconds just to get the character in there. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I liked how they announced Splatoon. Splatoon looks very nice. Looks different. Looks, uh, it still looks kitty. Still looks properly Nintendo. But it's cool how they go ahead and dive in it, in a sense. Uh, it's pretty cool. And um, I also liked how they have some, they, they announced like, um, it was not announced, it's very new Legend of Zelda was coming, but they showed a little bit of Legend of Zelda. I love how it's going to be like Skyrim in the sense, or at least they said it was going to be like, where you can just walk, on, go, enter anywhere from anywhere. It's greatness, because it, it gives it more, and they said, I think, they said that you could like go into different towns and stuff, like no matter how early you are in the game and stuff, like in Skyrim. I mean, that, that's really cool. I would love to see like a Legend of Zelda, like in Skyrim style, it'd be pretty cool. But let's see, I also liked how... Like, they showed Miyamoto, even though I didn't notice it at first, they showed him, I think, he, it looked like he was playing a, pr a version of Star Fox. Like, that was, that was their way of announcing Star Fox for next year. Looks like he was playing, like, probably an alpha version of it, or even pre-alpha, but it was cool. And, like, like I said, it was weird how, at the end, they were like, come, and Miyamoto's going to show us more new games. And I'm like, what? I'm like, who saves new games for after a conference? But it was cool. It, it, may, it meant that you had a reason to keep going back to Nintendo. Honestly, with Microsoft and them, they showed you probably more gameplay of the game, but I don't think they really revealed any new games after their conference. So, if you were to count the whole thing from the con from the digital event to the um, Treehouse and all the games that they revealed and stuff like that, like even Mario Party 10, I think Mario Party 10 was revealed after the digital live event, and that was another game I was waiting for, because I, I, I personally love Mario Parties. They're, they're good games. I mean, they're good games, especially when you just want to have friends over and you just have, you play a Mario Party game, it's really fun. I just actually just played Mario Party 8 the other day. I think it was actually last Saturday. Or no, last Friday I played Mario Party 8. Yeah, so it was, um, so it was a pretty decent conference and it was different from the other ones. I loved how they had the, the Robot Chicken little shorts for greatness. I love how they had Nintendo characters in Robot Chicken, like how the dude was like, where's Star Fox? And then Rezzy Fuzme gets out laser eyes and zaps him. It was really great. Uh, they were really creative with their digital event, and they were really creative with the whole Treehouse thing. They had people coming o over, introducing new games, and they had a mature game, The Devil's Third. Don't like the name, but it looked pretty cool. Even in the multiplayer, they, they show you're able to actually customize your own maps, which is actually very rare for... Because um, it's, it's weird, because like, it's a first-person shooter. Well, actually, it's a third-person shooter, but when you like aim your gun, it looks like it's first-person, and then you have like swords and stuff. But, what, but with the whole customization thing, it's... it's I realized that we kind of went away from that with games. Like a lot of, ga I, I think games used like Halo. When Halo 2, I think it was, first introduced for Forge Mode, I'm not sure if it was one, but at least I think you had Forge Mode by two or three. 
And when you had Forge mode, it was like, now you can create your own maps. But honestly, a lot of shooters did not follow suit, I noticed. The Call of Duties, the Battlefields in them, you don't, they're not allowed to create your own maps. So it's kind of cool that Devil's Third will allow us to create your own maps. It's still not a good name. <laughs> anyway, but there were, other, there were other good stuff. They didn't show, um, they, they showed, um, they, they didn't talk too much about the hit games, actually. They talked about more about games that you weren't, sh like Yoshi's Ball of Yarn thing game. I don't think it's called that. I don't know what it's called, but it's Yoshi's game. It looks like a, a, a sequel to Yoshi's Story from the N64, if I was to say that. Because it really looks like the whole how you aim eggs and stuff like that, how you, you know, absorb enemies, you get eggs and stuff like that, you jump. And it's cool that it's co-op, but it's, but co-op was, let's just face it, co-op was the main theme of B3, but I'll probably talk about that later in another video. Now, but with um, the whole, they, did, they announced a lot of games that wasn't, sh that wasn't, like Bayonetta, they did a very smart thing. They brought up Bayonetta 1. Why? Because... One of the biggest things about when a game comes to a new console, like when Mass Effect 3 came to the Wii U, one of the biggest things is that, why would I buy Mass Effect 3 for my Wii U when I haven't played the other ones because I didn't own... Let's just say you went, you're only a Wii owner. Even though I know a lot of people own the Wii also owned another console. Let's say you're only a Wii owner. Then all of a sudden Mass Effect 3 comes to Wii U and you're like, wow, I want to play that, but I haven't played the other two. So it doesn't make sense. So it is good that they have included Bayonet 1 with Bayonet 2. That's just smart. And it's something that other other systems should practice too, because sometimes you have it where a game was on one system and it moves over to the next, and the other system doesn't have the game before it. So it's smart. It's very smart. Anyway, but um, Nintendo was just they were they were really on the money they were with the comedy. They really showed us something different. It wasn't just people coming out on stage and talking about games like the other conferences. It was like you know they did different things. They showed they, they showed those animation clips they brought out all these trailers and then at the end there when they brought out the um pa lady palatina lady palatina hope i don't think i pronounced that right they brought that animation and i was like oh wow super smash animation that would be so great right but then all of a sudden it was just introducing lady palatina as a character in smash brothers and i was like oh even though i know people were like that was greatness i mean it was a great it was a great animation fight but i was hoping so hoping for a Super Smash anime. I mean, do you know what that would be like? Imagine every character from Super Smash inside an animation world together. I mean, basically you just take the story mode from Super Smash Brawl, make it in an animation form, and you have a good, in my opinion, a good anime there. Of course you have to add some voices. You can't just have everybody going Mario and ha 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 and stuff like that. But still, that was pretty good. Lady Palantina looks extremely OP, if you ask me, but We'll see. She may be that character that everybody plays who can't really play the game. <laughs> who knows? Anyway, that was my thoughts on the Nintendo um, E3 conference. And in my personal opinion is that if you take all, if you, if you count Nintendo's digital event and Nintendo Treehouse as a combined E3 conference, Nintendo probably won E3. But if you just count Nintendo's digital live event, then Nintendo didn't win, in my opinion, because they announced... A lot of stuff after the event or some stuff at least they announced some stuff after the event so it was like if you just count the event I think that Sony prob or probably won but it was pretty close between Sony and Microsoft this year but if you count the whole thing including the treehouse then Nintendo probably won E3 this year anyway that's my my um, opinion on how Nintendo's conference at E3 tell me your opinion do you think who do you think won E3 all right this once again this feeding frenzy 91 like, comment, subscribe, and God bless.